Welcome to Barbell Logic Rewind. You're listening to Barbell Logic Podcast. I'm Matt Reynolds. I'm here with my cohort, Scott Hambrick. Scottism mm-hmm. Hambrick. And uh, we're here with his dad, Frog, which is what everybody calls him, which means it's the easiest first question I've ever had in my <laughs> life, which is, what's your real name? What's your real first name? William. William. So is mine. Right. So, yep. 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 I'm Thomas. He's Scott. Okay. Right. Middle names. Now, did you go by your middle name growing up before you became Frog? Absolutely not. You went by William. No, I did not. What did you go by? Well, I had uncles named Bill. Okay. Right. Grandpa named Bill. Somebody hollered Bill and everybody in the goddamn room stood up. Right. So they called me Tom. Not Billy Tom. No, they, no. they do that sometimes in Oklahoma. Yeah, they do that. They throw two no, of those they together. They call me Tom because that was my grandfather on my mother's side. So I was named after my dad's dad and my mom's dad. And how long did Tom last before Frog took over? 11 years. Okay. Yeah, I was told. So you were a kid. I was told sixth grade. Yes, yeah, so, yeah. so about right. So what's the story? How'd you become Frog? Well, my little sister had a neighbor. And they had a music class, and they had to go find a song, get the words to it, learn it, and sing it in music class. Okay. And she got froggy when a courting. <laughs> so my my sister told her, says, he's got that in a songbook. Well, drag his ass down here, and we're going to learn it. So I go down there and help her with it, and her mother went to call me Froggy. <laughs> And then her daddy. Term of endearment. Right. And her daddy went to call me. And then I had an older brother, and she had older brothers. So. That was it. Well, yeah, except when I was at my grandpa's house. He said, I ain't calling you no goddamn frog. (laughs) I said, okay. (laughs) Did you like it? I didn't care. Uh, They fed me. There's a lot of Toms. Was that Cecil? Who was that? Wiley Berry. Wiley. Yeah. Wiley and Ruthie. So by the time you're 15, 16, you're frog to everybody. Uh, no, I go back to Tom. Oh, you do? Yes. Okay. So then when do you go back to frog for the second time? When I come back to Tulsa area. Okay. So you went to off to school where? Over a little town over by the state line called Call Cord. And which, you were, you were how old Well, it was uh, my ninth grade. Okay. So by the time you're 14 years old. At Christmas, and we your, moved. Your mom had died young, right? When you were young? When I was 10. When you were 10. Now, wait, we got to back all the way up. So you were born in 1946. Wait a minute. Were you? I was hatched, really. <laughs> I was hatched. <laughs> so, so we thought 1946 for, that's all I knew, right? And then dad went and saw his Uncle Joe about five, six years ago. And Uncle Joe had a letter that my grandpa sent him. It's dated February 1945. That's correct. And it says, hey, we had a b- bouncing baby boy. His name's William Thomas. <laughs> so do you think that was a typo? Or do you think he wrote that down wrong? Or do you think you were born in 45 and they I think it? I was actually born in 45 because they said I was uh, <laughs> mature for my age. <laughs> <laughs> so, you were always the big kid. So he went You're 70, the- 68 years thinking it was 46. No, that's because of public record for me right. and, and my uh, signing up for the draft and Social Security numbers and and what I was uh, registered to go to go to school. So that was the birth date. Right. And then Uncle Joe's like, here's this old brown Yeah, letter. here, I got something for you there. <laughs> yeah. And you had no idea when you got that letter. Oh, I, are you shitting me? You did know? Or no. No, no uh, clue. Uh, I kind of. In the back, back of my mind, I'd say, maybe I'm a year older than I thought. It <laughs> said, uh, well, I, I distinctly remember uh, that being mentioned like 1947, something like okay. that. Yeah. When I first started remembering shit. Sure. But you're, so you were born in Compton. In the, born in Compton. <laughs> Compton, California. I know some other guys that are, were born in Compton. They well, don't, they don't look like frog. <laughs> well, the whole deal was is back then it was a mm. bedroom community for Lockheed Martin, right? Okay, okay, and and uh, all the black people were in Watts. Yep, Long Beach Line was right next to uh, it. Was, right? was Hispanic. Okay, and uh, then the integration started. Your dad worked for Lockheed, or 
he worked for McDonnell Douglas and got loaned out during World War II okay. to Lockheed Martin because he was a structural aircraft mechanic. Okay. So he goes overseas to Africa and Egypt and all this stuff. Yeah. And then he comes back. And, and made you. And then he goes to Lockheed. and uh, it, Well, he comes back to Tulsa, to Douglas, and they send him back to Lockheed out, at, out in uh, Long Beach. And then that kind of went south, kind of ugly thing. And sure. So anyway, he signed on the Atomic Energy Commission. So he goes out to Marshall Islands when they're testing the A-bomb. So they go out and fly the airplane, drop the bomb, come back. Wow. And they check the airplane for structural damage. You know, when the, the pilots lived to get them back. Sure. So, so if the plane got back, you had to go check it. It's like Noah sending out the dove. So, that, so, <laughs> so that's, it comes back. It's right. good news. So that's what he did. What do you remember about your dad, especially before your mom passed? What was he like? He was gone. Travel all the time. Uh, divorced. Right, right. Gone. So you lived with mom. Yeah. Dad worked. Dad supported you guys still from his work? Yes. Yeah. Mom would lose the checks. She'd get hammered on four roses. Mm. Go hide the checks. Four Fix roses, it. not as quality whiskey back then as it is right. today. And then... Uh, <laughs> Couldn't find them and oh man, things like that. So mom struggled. Mom was a struggle. No, no, she didn't really struggle. Well, uh, I just mean <laughs> she'd just get a hold of him. He'd send another check. Right. Sure. So right. you know, yeah, he didn't duck his uh, responsibility for us at all. So. And then, so you mentioned you had a younger sister. You got any other siblings? Oh yeah, yeah. How how many? How old? I got a sister. Brothers, right? One brother. Okay. He passed away four years ago. Older He's than you? Two years. Okay. I had a sister, half sister, that passed away. That was uh, nineteen years older. 18? 18, oh, wow. 19, 18 okay. 19 years older. Okay. It was your dad's? No, it was your mom's. Mama's. Okay. Mama's baby girl, and she always introduced her as her niece. Interesting. Because uh, she had her so young. Oh, well, I imagine. I guess you know they said she was uh, thirty six when she passed, but she was actually over forty six. Oh wow! So. And pregnant. You guys are like Cuban defectors. They just lie about their age. You realize that all of the little league teams you ever played on are they are now forfeiting their trophies. Got to put an asterisk. Once they, yeah. once they realize that frogs out there pitching. He's seventeen years old. He's throwing them seventy two miles an hour at these twelve year old kids. I got a. Uh, I had a sister that was uh, two years younger than me that passed, and then I've got a little sister that's four years younger than me. Okay, so you got. So was that four? What do you got, four? Four, and then my Aunt May, the half-sister, yeah. And then, yeah, and then Aunt May, the half-sister. So then your mom passed at 10, is that what you said? You were well, 10 I, years old? Yeah. What, can I ask what happened there? We went horseback riding. So we go down in the ditch there in L.A. where, you know, where you could get horses and ride and had all the rip rap and stuff. And so we go down to go horseback riding. So everybody gets a horse. And my little sister, who was four years younger than me at the time, so six, six, something like that. Sure. Mom gets on a horse, and she'd rode a horse all her life. The guy picks up my little sister to hand it to her, and she blows up and goes to screaming and yelling and kicking and kicked the horse. The horse went to bucking, throwed my mom off in that pile of rip raft. Oh, my God. Broke her ribs, punctured her lungs. And uh, she refused to stay in the hospital because there are four of us at home. So she come home and suffocated. Oh, my goodness. That's how she actually passed. So. Yeah. Yeah. Punctured lung. She's probably swollen. Mm. So. Wow. Wow. It'd be interesting to talk to your sister about that. You know, just that's, that's, a, that's some heavy shit to live with, I would think. I don't think she even would remember. Under, sure. So young. Sure. Man, we didn't run it up or <laughs> <laughs> up the flagpole either. So you're so. ten, you got a bunch of now you got a bunch of little kids. Mom and dad are divorced. Dad's working and traveling all the time. You live with mom. You who do you go live with after my, si my sister May. Okay. Who's she comes almost from, twenty years older than you. Yeah, she comes from Colorado. Uh she was awesome. She come from Colorado down for the funeral and stuff. Her and my dad talk. So we get on an airplane, go to Colorado Springs, and we live with her a year. Wow. wow. So you guys flew out there. 
She came to the yes. LA for the funeral. I did not know that. I you thought, remember being on, is that the first time on an airplane? Yeah. That you can remember? Can you remember it? What it was like being on an airplane in like 1955, yes. 54, right? Somewhere yeah. Like I hated it. Did you hate it? It was scary. Well, yeah. We, we, uh, we got over the Rocky somewhere headed for Denver or whatever. We hit an air pocket and it just. Oh, <laughs> sure. And it's terrifying. Yeah. So, but. Okay. Yeah. I've flown thousands and thousands of hours sure. since then, but that first trip sucked. <laughs> right. Go to mom's funeral, put your ass on a DC-3. Yes. Yeah. Like, next day probably, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, we stayed, uh, she had a sister named Jessie. So we went and stayed with uh, Aunt Jessie for less than a week, right. something like that. Was that June's mom? Yeah. And then end up in Colorado Springs. Aunt May told me that when they all, when those Hamburg kids all showed up, that they were feral children. Feral. They, He's they not told in the yeah. neighbors they could shoot you like hogs, huh? So <laughs> you don't she, go play with a wild she, dog. She had, you ain't, your mama didn't teach you that. I know that's why you got to shoot them. That's what I said. So she break your ass like a wild horse. Well, she had rules, and if you didn't uh, play, man, she'd come on you. Good. Turn on you like a wild banshee. Good. Even before you... We, but there was no question, you know, that what she was trying to do was right. Sure. And I realized, you know, when she said, this is what I want you to do, it better happen. Yeah. <laughs> well, you could tell, like, the second you said her name a minute ago, I said she was awesome. Like, you're... Well, you know, my brother had a had a hard time with my mom passing. So he was, uh, let's say, belligerent and, you know... Sure. Negative and all that. But he he kind of... And he was how old? Two years older than me. So he's 12. Yeah. So gosh, so he's right in the middle of the worst time of your life anyway, right? Where it's. Well, well another deal is we get out there. This is a great story. <laughs> so they take us to the, have checkups like you take a dog to the vet. You know? <laughs> Normal kids get checkups. Right. You know? That's not, that ain't that weird. Yeah. But you know, us, I never. <laughs> it was weird for you. Never yeah, before. Yeah. So they, they go and they found out Uncle Sonny. That's my brother. They called him Sonny. His name was named after my dad, Grady. And uh, wait a minute, who was your dad named after? A blue nosed mule. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we'll get that in a minute. <laughs> so anyway, he uh, goes and has a. Or we go have our checkup and stuff. We'll find out he's got a hernia. So they and May said, "Well, we got to fix that." So they get him all rigged up, and then when he gets through having his hernia fixed, he discovered they'd also circumcised him. <laughs> <laughs> he was a mad dude. Oh, God. <laughs> they were feral. Yeah. It, it was, it was ugly. Even cut. It, it was for, it, for health reasons, she said. Yeah. Right. Good. <laughs> That's great. I concur. <laughs> That's a good move. So you go out there, and you live with Aunt May? Aunt May. For just a year? A year. So, so you're 11. Where you go from there? My dad came back from the Marshall Islands. He went down and bought a 54 Mercury Monterey, throwed us in it, and we come to Catoosa here in Batulsa. Mm. That's where his mom and dad lived. Okay. Brothers and all them. Nearest inland port right. in the United States, the port of Catoosa. It wasn't there yet. Oh, it wasn't? No. Oh, there no. Was no, no. No, no. There was a waterway. Well, there was, was just no one. Bur- there was just one bridge across the Burgess River. Too, okay, you know, and that was just ten years after the ferry went away. So that's that's uh, right. fifty six that you moved there mm-hmm. somewhere there and started going to school at Catoosa Public School. Right. right, and dad is raising you. Dad have a wife at this time or a girlfriend or anybody? Uh, sort of, kind of, maybe concubine. Yeah, so he concubine. So he called this person and she was still in california so she throws all of her stuff in her 54 ford oh, two-door God. hard top with a continental kit and her two red-headed kids and here she come Oof. that lasted about eight months because she throwed her kids and her stuff back in her little blue ford and said i've got to leave or i'm gonna kill tom <laughs> you <laughs> <laughs> so away they went never yeah. heard of them again wow but my mom was married probably four times, four to five. Dad was married three to four. Everybody was trying to find us another parent. We didn't need a parent. We were feral. Right. 
I mean, we really would looked after each other. Sure. Yeah. You joke about the feral, but you had a lot of street smarts. You guys obviously were raised in a way that you were kind of in survival mode for years, right? Oh, yeah. Peeling pomegranates. And- oh, yeah. We yeah. steal pomegranates and guavas and all that stuff. Uh, yeah. Oranges. And- right. Life was good. Yeah. <laughs> So anyway, I end up in Colorado Springs, so they enroll me in school, and I go down there and talk to them. They want to set me back two years. Wait, you go back to Colorado Springs? No, this so? went the first trip okay. out. Okay, they won't accept you back. So, uh, you know, they're, well, they're going to enroll us at, in school there. Sure. So we go down there, and they say, well, you're coming out of California. We're going to set you back two years. Ugh. This was fifth grade. You know, I said, wait a minute. I don't want to do that. Sure. And uh, they well, said, you're already a year older than all the fifth graders. <laughs> so they're like, listen, you're six, you're already 12. You right. got to go back and be with the third graders. He's like, no, 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 no. That's a, it's amazing that the administration would even look at you and say, yeah, we should put you with a bunch of <laughs> seven year olds. Like, listen, man, <laughs> okay. yeah. can you imagine the level of bully that you could be? So anyway, we uh, went over. Uh, what do you know? Well, I knew how to color. I could make shit with clay. I could finger paint. I could print my name. Wow. That's it. And I had this wonderful lady. Her name was Meisenbach, which was my was going to be my teacher. And I said, I'd like to try to make it. She said, I'll tell you what. You give me an hour every morning before school, an hour after school. Wow. To be tutored. And if you make it, you make it. If not, you're going back. Well, I said, I'm in. So when I left there, I knew how to read. I knew how Mm. to write longhand. I knew my multiplication tables. Mm. I could, you know, I walked in that class and they were doing long division and shit. I said, what's that? Is that Egyptian? (laughs) You know? (laughs) So anyway, I had a. You had six years or so of education in one. Yeah. You know, I mean, California, we're just trying to make you better neighbors. Right. You know, how to coexist in a, like, piss ants in an anthill. There's so many people. <laughs> yep. Their their main object is for everybody to love each other. Sure. And, no education. And pay taxes. Yeah. Not a lot has changed. About the same. So by the time you came to Catusa, you had a decent education. You were relatively caught up at that point. I got to where I actually enjoyed math. Yeah. Uh, English kind of pissed me off. Because they were making a lot more out of it than what it physically was Mm. and how it was used. You know, uh, the diagramming sentences and all that other kind of crap. I said, really? (laughs) What is the reason for this? It's like algebra. They should spend that time teaching people how to do checkbooks, Mm. how to manage their money and things like that. Instead of if you got four apples and three oranges and Dickie has one grape. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and you mash them all up in a big can and you leave it lay for six months. What do you have? <laughs> you got something to drink. I was going to say, you got, pr- <laughs> you got prison wine, <laughs> right? You know? So anyway, so, it, so it, now it, you're back. Now we're caught up and Wiley Berry calls you froggy. <laughs> and so that's why you were there. That's why you're in Katusa at sixth grade. Right. Yeah. So, so I have a paddle from sixth grade that one whole side of it has my spankings on it. The other side has the whole class, the rest of the class. Oh, like tick marks. Yes. Like hash marks. Yeah. I mean, like doing time. Who swatted you? Uh, Mr. Sams and a guy named Gabe Walters. So JW Sams, the first guy that ever gave me swats to Really? Uh-huh. Your first, your first spanking at school was the same guy that spanked your dad. They weren't actually swats either, buddy. He put the hammer on you. <laughs> Did he? He was good at it. Yeah. Yeah. Was it good? Did you need it? Or do you look back with disdain? I probably had it coming. Yeah, sure. You know. Mr. Sam's a good guy. Yeah, it's just part of life, you know. Sure. You were ornery, need to be beat, got to beat you. So when I got to kindergarten, he was the principal of the elementary school. Well, yeah. Yeah, and I, I had a few like that. Yeah, I had, a, I had an algebra teacher, Mr. Hawk. Actually, I had him for algebra and geometry and trig. I had him three years, and he uh, he was my dad's math teacher. And my dad went on to be a civil engineer, and it was always interesting. I had a few of those. I had a I had Mr. Gould was a history political science teacher that uh, was also the golf coach. My dad was the captain of the golf team. 
in golf. A, What's that? I know, yeah. right? And they listen. We we actually we come from nothing too. If you hear, but it's just pasture hockey. So yeah, well, it's weird that the only thing we knew about a golf, golf course was uh, to be over there and dropped off so you could carry somebody's bag. Yeah, sure. It's uh, well, even my grandpa. We didn't we didn't mention it when we interviewed my grandpa Lynn, but even up till about three years ago, the golf course he played. Even at uh, eighty two, everybody in town calls it the Goat Ranch, right? Because it's not it's in the it ain't the country club. That's not where we're playing. So it's the public course. But we're recording this tonight because he's playing golf tomorrow. Oh right, that's yeah, right. yeah, that's, that's right. right. So that's he, shit. right, at some time he <laughs> yeah he figured it out. So, so how, yeah, go ahead. How long were you at Catusa then before you went to Colcord? Three years, seven, eight, nine, sixty four years, three and a half years. Yep. Yeah, we went at Christmas. In 1960. You're like 15, somewhere in there? Kind of, sort of. Okay, in that ballpark. Yeah. Depends on what year you were born. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> but somewhere you know. in there. We're in the right ballpark, though. You're not driving yet. I mean, not legally. No. <laughs> but I did go into Arkansas and get my driver's license. You could you could dri get a driver's license in Arkansas. At 14, you could go to Arkansas. And get a driver's license. And then bring it 14. back, and it would still count in Oklahoma? Well, what the deal was is uh, we lived on the Oklahoma side at Flint Creek. And we had a Siloam Springs address, so I just go over and I just take the test and stuff. I got a Siloam Springs, Arkansas address, so they give me a driver's license. You was the town you lived in in Oklahoma right on the border, right next to Siloam Springs, or you? Why did you have well, a, a Siloam Springs address? They didn't really live in a town. Well, I understand, no. but what I'm saying is, is that the the address of the place you lived in in Oklahoma actually had a Siloam Springs address, or you guys yes. had another property? No, no, okay. it had actually. It was did. there. You lived on the border, basically. Well, yeah, it was seven miles. Right, it was close. Okay, gotcha. So you went into the city town of Siloam no, Springs. No, we never lived in city. No, you went into the town of Siloam Springs to right. get your driver's license. So that way, then you could drive with an with an Arkansas driver's license in Oklahoma in case any, there was a problem. When I moved, you know, I, I came from Arkansas. It was still, you could get your learner's permit at 14, which uh, you can't do. I think you have to be 15 and a half or something in Missouri. It's not a, you got to wait a while. I think in Arkansas. Yeah, but you could get your driver's license to be a school bus driver at 16. That's amazing. <laughs> I'm serious. So that's some juniors in high school driving the bus? Yes. Yes. That's incredible. Yeah, they go when they were the last stop on the bus. And they'd drop everybody off and park the bus at home, and they'd get up in the morning, go to school, they'd pick everybody up on the way back. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. Can you imagine? They got $8 a day. Yeah. Did you do that? No. No. Yeah, I think you can still get what they call it a farm to market license or something like that. Right. We, you can drive to the farmer's co op, yeah. right, for 14 I think. That's wild. Yeah, you drive a hay truck and right. that kind of stuff. So when did you move out and decide, I'm tired of being raised by adults? <laughs> How old were you? Well, I started making my move when I was about 14, but okay. <laughs> I actually pulled it off when I was probably 16, 15 and a half. So what happened 16. between there, 14 and 16? You started sleeping in other places? Well, no. I I done my best to try to help Dad keep his farm. You okay. know, we had, yep. we had cows to milk and hogs to feed and chickens and... A lot of chickens, right? You guys had like yeah, commercial uh, chicken. Off yeah, the like a chicken house have like 23,000 chickens. Yeah. And, Tyson, and you fed them with a shovel and a wheelbarrow. Right. Was that was it a Tyson chicken house? Is that who you sold to or who? No. Plus. Plus. Oh, is that Oklahoma company? No, it's Arkansas Plus okay. Bow Green. Okay. Okay. And, and then you leapt out for real, fifteen and a half, sixteen on your own. Yeah. And what was that like? Is another day in the adventures. Well, where'd you live? <laughs> Well, I didn't really live anywhere. I had, uh, I come back to Tusa for just a little bit, and then I turned around and went back to where I was going to school because I made my grandpa a promise that I would graduate high school. Okay. So I go back over to Colcord, and it's during the holiday thing at that particular time. So they always left the gym open so you go play in the gym, you know, play basketball yep. and this, that, and other. So I just found me a nice place to stay in the gym. Hmm. Cold outside. It's holidays. You're 16. Yeah. Where else are you going to sleep? Bad showers. Yeah. You know, and all Locker that. room, showers. Take a dump. You start right. sleeping in the gym. Yeah. Wow. Then How I got, long did you do that? Then I got discovered. Uh, two weeks. You, like got, you got, somebody found you. Yeah. How'd you get found? Uh, I don't really, really, really know. I think the, <laughs> the principal 
the guy that I ended up staying with uh, suspected that I was staying in the gym because, right. you know, he'd come down early and opened yeah. up school. You're the out. first guy at school every day. You're the last guy to leave. You know, and it's, I think he seen me coming out of the gym and going in, you know, that kind of thing. So you said it's the guy you started staying with. Is that yeah. and he took you in and you stayed yeah. at his house? So yeah. the principal finds out that you're sleeping in the gym at 16 years old and decides to take you in and gives you a bedroom and make sure you got a place to sleep. And he feeds you too, give you food, breakfast. Yeah, but I didn't impose on him very much on that. Yeah. You know, he, he had uh, bird dogs. He had uh, Angus cows and stuff like that. And I took care of all that kind of stuff for him. Did you guys talk about that, make a deal, or did you just start kind of working and feel like this is what I need to do if he's yeah, getting a place to I mean, sleep? Yeah, that's what it was. Yeah. You know, he, you know, he'd get up, go feed the cows. I said, I got it. Hmm. And out in his pasture, I lost my class ring. I thought I'd lost it. It'd been gone, you know, it'd be gone forever. Well, a year later, I'm out there to go spread some hay and there it laid. So I, I was, I was, I was golden. So I, <laughs> had he taken in other folks or before? He had one guy that he had took in probably 20 years earlier for a, a short period of time because they're, I, I kind of understand that the guy's parents were killed in a car wreck. Mm. So he let him stay with him, finish up his senior year in high school. So this guy had been principal for decades. No, he wasn't a principal then. He was uh, just, just a teacher. Just a teacher. But still in just, education for decades. Yeah. That's over the course did. of 20 plus years. Well, the only people that were, let's say, had a decent car to drive, decent house to live in, and decent clothes, they were the school teachers or the superintendent yeah. or a preacher. Really? Everybody else was on the same level, grubbing. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. Times have changed. Well, you get 100 people in the congregation, 10 points. <laughs> well, it's high living, man. That's true. Everybody's paying 10 points, I suppose. But, uh, well, and I was thinking more teachers. Well, yeah, yet. but, you know, I mean, you even go over there right now. I was over there last weekend for a alumni deal. And uh, for Illuminati? <laughs> for what uh, alumni dinner oh alumni yep. yeah, alumni alumni <laughs> i don't speak missouri <laughs> that's mule shit uh, show me right show me <laughs> just show me just this? show me just just about no okay. just, so yeah. anyway the nice cars in the parking lot and and uh, people that had on dress pants and nice linen shirts stuff like that at the church were school teachers. Were the school teachers. Yes. Even still. Even still. Yeah. Yeah, it's poor. Poor. Poor, poor. There's the poor over there that you're can't making, even pay attention. You're making 35000 a year over there. You're That's high life. You're rocking. That's And that's probably what the teachers make. Well, the deal is, is that it worked for the chicken plant. Right. Uh, making twenty one. No. At the chicken plant now? I don't think so. 21000 a year? Probably not. <laughs> what county is that? What ca- Delaware. Delaware County. Ports County in the state. That's crazy. That's beautiful place, though. Sure. Nice folks. Sure. You can hunt, find a lot of shit to eat. Yeah. That's, it's good. Yeah. I live I, northwest Arkansas is where I was raised. Same sort of thing. Beautiful. You know, white right on the White River. Good fishing. Good hunting. Good people. Nothing. Nothing there. You, know, you go back when you're 30 and all your friends are in prison for dealing meth or, you know, nobody's done anything. So, so you came from this really, I mean, it's it's, you've got to. A rough background growing up, right? You lost your mom at 10, and you were feral by your own qualifications, right? And, uh, you know, five, six years behind in education, and then you get caught up because you got this teacher that takes you in and and takes you under her wing two hours a day for a year and catches you up. And then and then you end up moving out, and you live in a gym, and then get taken in by a principal. And, man, that's a, that's a, <laughs> that's a tough upbringing. And I... You know, I know you as this guy who's a, you know, a, a fairly financially independent family man. You you know, you're a great grandpa and a great dad and and Scott and I hang out all the time and he talks so so high about you. How'd this work? I mean, how did it work going from this like insane the cards that you were dealt in life weren't very good. You weren't dealt, dealt very Well, you got you got to understand things happen, but you don't have to look at them like they happened to you. Like they wounded you. They are, you know, their experiences. Yep. You know, you can get bitter and mad about a lot of things. And I was cheated. No, I wasn't. And never felt that way. Never no. felt that way at 13 at no. 11. No, you were always just like, here we go. 
Let's pull, there we go. Next pick day. myself up by my bootstraps and go. Time next, to work. Next day. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. So. so what was life like after high school? When did you meet your wife? I met her actually probably 1958. Okay. And I knew her brothers and I knew who she was because she and my sister were friends. And How close are you guys in age? She's a year younger than I am. Okay. In the same high school? You're going to the same high school at the time? Middle no. School. Well, I'm same same school district though, right? Well, I you know, I mean I left in I left in ninth grade and junior high. Okay. So anyway. You were done with school after ninth so, No, I would Oh, done. that's in Katusa. You left right. Katusa. So, so Dad would you would hitchhike from out, out at Colcord back to Katusa on weekends and stuff like How that. How far away yeah. are these two towns? So eighty nine like, miles. Eighty nine miles. Okay. So on the weekends you're coming back to Katusa. Occasionally, yeah. Right. And you'd hitchhike. Yeah. Back up here. Is there a highway that goes from 412? Goes straight from Cold Court to Siloam. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, it's 412 now. It was old old highway. Old, old highway, highway 33. 33. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Got it. So you hitchhike back. Yeah. And you met her your ninth grade year, and she's a eighth grader. Something like that. Yeah. I mean, I knew who she was. But, right. right. You know, if I, You're not sweet on each other. Yet. No. So anyway, I'm out of school a year out of high school when I come back because I uh, have a job at a chicken plant. And I go over there, and I'm getting a dollar and a nickel an hour, and I'm getting chickens. They're just coming, just and you're tearing your fingernails off, and you're getting these chickens. And the line boss comes by, and said, "Boy, you're sure doing a good job." Says, uh, and you look, and it was like a quarter of a mile to the wall. And here's this guy snaking along the wall, going up there. Says, "You keep working hard. You can have it. Maybe you can have his job one of these days." I said, "What does he make?" He said, "A dollar thirty-three an hour. He's the plant manager." I took my gloves off at that instant, my apron. I said, I'm done. I'm not getting trapped in this shit. <laughs> and I left. Yeah. So. And back to Katusa. Yeah. For good. For good. So you're doing odd jobs around Katusa, around the area. Yeah. You know, I've, there's a lot of people work with their hands. There were, you know, carpenters that needed help. Sure. And, and then uh, one of my uncle's wife's brother was a mason bricklayer so anyway he got me in and i was a mason tender for a while that was a good flick and this is like in your mid-20s no i'm not no this, not yet no early 20s 20 20 and so are you married yet by the time you're 20 i uh, get married at 20 okay how long did you guys date two years two years tell me about your bride she's awesome amazing She's uh, special. What was it that changed her from this eighth grade little girl that was <laughs> friends with your sister to you came back and decided this was something? Well, you I go down, I, you know, I go down and there's ball game going, and I hadn't seen her in three years or something like that. And I look down behind the bleachers, and here's this long, tall, good-looking gal with black Levi's on. <laughs> I said, damn. <laughs> she, Mama's probably 5'9 or 10. I was going to say, she's still right. long and tall. She's yeah. just imagine it's the kind of genetics that makes Scott Hamburg. <laughs> 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 so, anyway, I go and investigate and I find out it's Mary. So, I, you know, I catch her in the gym and we visit a little bit and I catch. Does that, mean, does that mean corner? Yeah. <laughs> Stalk. Well, she had a friend, and we went on a double date. My buddy took Mary, and I took Brandon. We go out on this date. Oh. Thing, and I said, me and Jerry put our heads together, and I told him, I said, I don't like this son of a bitch. <laughs> Let's swap. <laughs> he said, okay. <laughs> Did he marry her? Yeah. Yes. Oh, that's so good. <laughs> so good. <laughs> so now you're you're in love. You're 20. Well, At what point do you join the? Is it the Navy? Where'd you join? I joined the Army. The Army. Army. When, when were you? Well, the deal was, I go down and I was thinking about joining the Army. Now, this is before me and Mary got the. You know, I said, you know, they got food and roof and bed and. Well, I'm about blind in my right eye, so I go and I said, we don't, we don't care nothing about having you. I said, okay, so I go, and then my buddy Jerry, when I, he joined the, the National Guard. I want you to come and join the guard. I said, okay. So I go down there. I join the guard. A week later, I get my draft papers. So 
anyway, it gets shut down. And so I just do my time in the guard. I spent 15 years in the Army Guard, and then I, one day I heard some guys bitching because the remote in their room, they couldn't find it for the TV. And I was thinking, them guys got to be in the Air Force. <laughs> <laughs> so that was a full-timer for the Guard. Full-timer for the Guard. Right. So you did your, your two years or whatever it was, part-time in the Guard. And six. Then you, oh, six years? Part-time. Yeah. Before you went full-time. Right. Okay. And then you go full-time. So now by this time, you're 26, 20, somewhere there, 25, 26, that you go full-time? Yeah. And then... At 72, you... January 1, 72. Okay. And uh, I was working for Pontiac. Things were going real bad. They built these beautiful new Pontiacs in the first year of emissions. They changed camshafts and screwed them up where they wouldn't run. And it was all a brand new product. Nobody would buy them. So I went from 500 bucks every two weeks down to $86. Oof. I said, I can't do this. Well, the old man that run the maintenance shop for the guard, because I had just got out, he came down there and he says, hey, you want to go to work? I said, okay, stand right there. I went and got my truck. We pushed my toolbox over in the back of it. We went out to the armory and he says, well, you're not really hired yet. We got to go down and talk to McGee, which was the guy, the Colonel McGee guy. And I said, okay. We go down there. He said, You're like, thanks. I just quit my fucking job. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> and you, That's and what you I'm thinking. He, he said, be here at 3 in the morning. We're going to Norman. I said, okay. <laughs> so I'm there, and we go down to Norman, and we go in and talk to this old curmudgeon. <laughs> How much you got to have an hour? And at that time, they, you know, before they went federal civil service, said, I got to have $4 and a nickel. Oh, God damn. He said, that's too much money. I said, well, that's what it's going to take. I've got a family feed. And I said, I, you know. Oh, and that's a lot of money. He says, go out there and sit down. I got to talk to Orville. So Orville went in there, and they just, rah, rah, rah. You know, after about two and a half hours, they oh man, they agreed, okay, but don't you tell anybody what, you, what you're drawing. I said, done. Two and a half hours. So I got I was sweating it for a while. Yeah, then. so we go back to Tulsa, and I unload my toolbox, and I got my stall, and this, that, and the other. One of the old guys says, you know what? If you keep your nose clean, you work real hard. You'll make what I make. I said, "What do you make?" He said, two eighty six. Oh my God! I said, "I've got to go." Go. So I was a little kid, and I remember Orville. He was it's, awesome. So you're, you know, Beetle Bailey comic books. Yeah, the sergeant in there is yeah. Orville Snorkel. Oh, it is. Yes, that's the guy. And I was a little bitty kid, a sure. little kid. And that'd be I'm Orville. Like, that's the same guy. Oh, to right. me, he was right. Sergeant. <laughs> he come by and said, hey, you got any... Demeanor similar and everything. Yeah, huh? you got any red man chewing tobacco? I mm. always kept, yeah, I'll That's go the ahead. best. He gave a big jaw full of it. And, and he walked, you know, 30 steps to the the back door of the shop, chewing and spitting all the way. And if we get to the door, he'd just take it and throw it out in the parking lot. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> That's all he there's, wanted. Just wanted to hit There's still a bunch of maple syrup in there. Yeah, just a touch. Some of that balcone, speaking yeah. of... So at some point, life gets pretty good for you too. You've you've built a, you've got a good marriage. You've got a good job. You're working. Well, I'm standing on the, you know, I'm down at Fort Polk. You know, I've been married a week and I got a deal. You got to go to Fort Polk to basic training. And I go down there and I give my last twenty dollars to the preacher when we got married. And then uh, I call the wife and she says I bought a trader house. I said I'm getting with what. I'm getting 44 bucks a month. You done what? <laughs> right. She said, I got it. We're good. I said, oh, shit. So, she, was she hooking? No, she's, she's kidding. She's working for uh, <laughs> Erdley's. She's working for a department store flipping hamburgers and stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, she kept it running until I got back. Yeah. Then uh, that's where little William Scott was born. Yeah. You know? They were married for a long time, at, at the time, anyway. It was eight or nine years, something like that. Before you had him? Yeah. Okay. Didn't Good. want to bring him. We didn't have nothing we could feed him or no place sure. to put him. No, we did the same. I was married. We were married six years. How long were you guys married before you had your first? Uh, what was it? Five? Okay. Three yeah. days. Three days. Three days. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and we were married about four months before we had our first. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so anyway, we bought us a lot. Then we moved the trailer up there, and then we bought a house and had it moved on there, and then we always tried to do... Yeah, I don't think people know what that means. So, you know, they would uh, build an expressway, and you could buy a house that was in that right-of-way. 
Okay. Right? And you go in there and jack that thing up and roll it out, put an I beam under it and put some axles under it and move it. Okay. Right. So y'all drive off with it and drove off with it. Right. So, you know, there's all these, you know, houses on frame houses on crawl spaces. So you bought what 900 square foot house or something like that. Or yeah, it was 36, but 24. Yeah. I get four grand for it. Guy moved it for 200 bucks and I went to work hooking it up. Yeah. So we, we moved out into the Vergas river bottoms. 80 in 80. Yes, that's right. And then, uh, they started building an underground house. Yeah. So we lived in it. We moved a, a, a trailer out there to live in while you guys built the house. And so, you know, every spare dime, every spare minute building this, this house. Yeah. So I got pictures of me and Scott figure- up there with a jackhammer. We had this rock about the size of a 1948 short school bus in one corner of it. We had to break it up and move it out till we had room. So we spent a lot of hours on jackhammer. Sure. How long did it take you to build it? Two years. Shit, it was never done. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I figured when I moved in, yeah. <laughs> You're right. Uh, no, it was longer than that. So we moved out there uh, halfway through my first grade year, and we moved in m- m- fourth grade. So it took about so three and a half three years. years. Yeah. yeah. It was an underground house, you know, 16, 1,500 square feet, two-car garage, house under three foot of dirt, skylight, yeah. three bedrooms. I'd love to see the electricity bill. It was nothing. It was nothing, I'm sure. Yeah, a little natural gas well on the property, so yeah. heated for you get a free natural gas. gas well on the property. Yeah. <laughs> That's the kind of stuff you get in Oklahoma. Right. You just yeah. drilled the pocket. Drip mm-hmm. gas out there. And, uh, yeah, a little wood stove in there and a heated. So, if you need to. How did you figure to live <laughs> really within your means as you as you got older i mean that's not something i mean look i did right, not borrow anything yeah how how though because everybody that comes from your background does i had no resources nobody had lend it <laughs> i had no resources i mean that's is that what it is you didn't you couldn't go down and talk to a loan officer at a bank because you didn't no one didn't know how didn't know didn't care you said i'm just yeah. gonna work i mean and, that, that was one of them I'm glad that's a piece of knowledge I didn't pick up mm-hmm. because right. everybody, you know, like you hear them right now, I'm going to get the equity out of my home. Sure. I'm going to spend it on something. Right. Well, they don't realize I want another home later on where they're going to get the money. Right. For the down payment. It's the equity in their house. Sure. You know, now, that's, you did have a lady. So there's a federal employees credit union here in town. And I remember there was a lady, Rosie. She yeah. was your lady. You could go in there. And get some money to go buy 12 bundles of plywood to build forms with. Yeah. I could go in there and get a signature loan. Sure. For like up to five grand. Right. For not very much money. Sure. Yeah. You know, so. Right. Right. You, you know, but, but borrowing $50,000 was out of the question. Oh, hell no. Wouldn't <laughs> even consider. Still wouldn't today. Sure. And I see guy. I got buddies that are buying pickups paying 45000 We see it all the time. Yeah. It's, it's amazing. We fit in well with this crew. We don't do that. Mm-mm. Nope. Yeah, we were driving over here to the warehouse. And we're, we're we're recording this here in my data storage, and we're driving over to the warehouse, and this new GMC pickup <laughs> drove by, and Dad said, "You know what that fucking pickup cost?" You know, sure. You know, GMC pickup. When I was a kid, that was rubber floor mats, door crank. That was the bare bones product. Sure. Well, know? GMC was the truck. It's a better truck, I think. Yeah, but it was a work truck branch of General Motors. It wasn't a half ton Chevrolet pickup. Sure. Or whatever. It was. It always had leaf springs. It always was the truck that you'd want on a farm to haul hay or yep. work or whatever. And yeah, now they're almost the work 50 truck. grand. Now they're yeah. expensive. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but you don't know when the guy drives in, you know. They like him because they got a pretty grill. Well, I was going <laughs> to say, it's the, you know, I've, I've got a nice truck, right? That I got for a real cheap price and I bought in cash because I had the cash to buy. I'm not, I'm not going to go buy, I'm not going to spend $50,000 on a truck and go put a seven-year loan on us crazy you know they've got an aversion of borrowing but by the way i was raised not as rough as a background as you as you but and super poor super south and my parents didn't teach me any of this stuff and i learned from my culture and my family what you do is you borrow Hmm. like that's the thing that was ingrained in me i've had to beat it out of myself like you know i was the kid that at 18 went to college and signed up for the credit cards and ran up $5,500 $5,500 well, credit yeah, card debt. Yeah, but, you know, if, if you're in the right area, you got all these farmers 
and these guys that they go down to the Farm Bureau and they bet on the come. They sure. borrow on the come. They sure. borrow the money to plant the crops. Sure. And I'll pay you back this fall. Yep. Or I need to buy 25 cows. It's or, been done that way for decades. And, and so just the habit of borrowing. Yeah, once you get it, you can't get out. No, you're, was, you're, was, the, was the circle. A slave to the lender. But you ask Kate how they do it. Well, my mom, mom's tighter than a banjo string, man. Right. And worked her ass off, too. Cleaning houses. You've talked about yeah. her before. Mom's always had a side hustle. Yeah. So clean, cleaning, cleaning clean houses. I remember yeah, mom. Story. So, yeah, here's the business lesson from Mary. She cleaned houses because she could do that. You know, she could dump us off at school or get us on the bus or whatever and then go clean a house and be home in time for, you know, do whatever, yeah. whatever she needed to do for me and my sister. And uh, she's like, I don't clean dirty houses. Those are bad customers. You know, they don't yep. pay the bill. It's yep. more work than needs to be. I can get a better rate from these people. Yeah. That's a big deal. Yeah. Like picking the customers. Yeah. Yeah. And she had all of them for over 20 years. Yeah. The they they the all only, died eventually. <laughs> yeah. The only way that she lost the customers is if they died of old age. Yeah. Yeah. So it seems like, I mean, the, the thing that I recognize from your story, the kind of common theme is that you really, you had work ethic most of your life. Right, like even that's what we did for fun. Even when you were feral, you worked. Well, you, you know, just, one of mine and Scott's favorite things to do is go cut firewood and split it. Sure, you know, him and his buddies would come out and they'd go out in the woods and kick over trees, and so we have something to cut up and split. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we just had a good time. Do you think your Scott? Do you think your your work ethic is more nature or more nurture? That you get these work genetics from your mom and dad. Or did they ingrain it in you growing up? I mean, it was it really? I, I don't know. You know, mom has these three brothers, and they're all nuts. Like one of them, nuts how? With the work stuff, they're like, like you. They work. They work. They, they, they work, work for work's sake. Like <laughs> my, my uncle Roy. My uncle Roy will go dig a goddamn hole in rock. In rock with like a with the yeah with the hand with hand drill. Value. Yes, he will go dig a hole in sure. limestone at his house because it's Saturday. <laughs> you know uh, I like him already yeah oh man you know and, and make uh, a good Calvinist they're all that way Pink so, bar and a yeah <laughs> Pink. yeah so I, I don't know I don't mind it no it's what we did you know my my sister didn't enjoy it that much sure <laughs> well but, and the question is was the upbringing the same I think mostly she might say something different but I think mostly yeah you know so that's something you know do you you know, you got two, you've got two kids, dad, and they're different. Clearly my, my sister's a sister. Like electricity. Right. <laughs> ACDC. <laughs> two different things. You know, see, so you, you know, do you actually treat them the same? Cause they're actually different people. You could say, gosh, you don't treat them the same cause they're not the same. I, I don't know what you do. Well, that's like I would kids. treat a guy different. I would a young lady. Sure. And, and then my wife would treat a young lady different she would a young man so i don't know you know yeah. uh, both of my children think they're the only child <laughs> that's what mary said you that's know pretty good yeah I think both so. of them think they're the only child who is that other asshole that's claiming Ken, <laughs> you know? but it's all good so what's the uh what's the legacy that you want to leave well why would a person want to leave a legacy when they've got somebody like scott well he is a legacy right yes I mean, you know, this whole thing is not about me. It's about my family. Yep. And uh, everybody loves Mary. Everybody loves Scott. I don't know about that. Well, you know, it's debatable. And, and, <laughs> and, and, and his sister, you know, they are taking care of themselves. Yep. Uh, I'm just having a great time. And my wife still lets me own half of everything we've got as long as I act correct. <laughs> you know, it, you realize it shouldn't have turned out this way, right? I mean, that's like, I get it that you. No, I wanted better than what I had. Yeah. I did not. You broke the cycle of poverty, which, I mean, really, really, that's really rare. Uh, you know, when you realize there's you that's going to make a difference in your life. Yep. And you are responsible for yourself, and the rest of them bastards has all got hobnail boots, and they'll they'll wear you out. Yep. You got to take care of yourself. You got to find out where you want to go, 
and head that way. You may not end up in that spot. You may deviate over here, over there, but you know, you got to keep putting that other foot in front. And economics is a big driver in that. Sure. And if you borrow it, you don't have that money. Nope. That's not yours. Not yours. It's theirs. Everything you're working for, that's not yours. That's theirs. I did not like that at all. Yep. That was not my, uh, did not give me a warm and fuzzy. It bothers me. If I owed you $10. You're working your ass off to pay it by the lunchtime. I would do my best. If you left town, I would drive to Missouri and pay you. Right. <laughs> sure. Because I, I, I just, I've been uh, screwed over a few times. Well, second time, it's shame on me. Sure. First time, shame on you. Sure. Well, there ain't been no shame on me. <laughs> so, I mean, I'm, I've been been used a couple of times, but that was just one time around. Yep. We're Learned done. a lesson. Well, that's where the personal responsibility, it seems like it's the, it's one of the primary themes of people that we interview that are successful. There are people that in every scenario look at through the lens of this is on me. Yep. Buck stops here. Well, that's like Scotty. He goes to college, right? Gets out of school, and he goes to junior college, and he's working, right? And then he goes down to OU. So we say, you need any help or anything? No, I'm good. Okay. Yeah. Well, he gets him a, a deal in this apartment complex. Right. And, By the way, no, you don't need anything except I know the story that you're eating brown beans out of a can. Well, yeah, but because, you know what I'm like, saying? But No, well, I get I, it, but it's that's the, still the attitude. You're but, like, no, no, I'm going to build this for myself. Me and Mom reserved the right to fill up his refrigerator sure. and car with gas. <laughs> sure. it, yeah. But as far as me giving him 100 or $1,000 for this, sure. he wouldn't have it. Sure. Yeah. Well, Dad, you were like, uh, I want to go to buy fuel so you'll come home and see your mother. <laughs> yeah. And, and then uh, there was also a go ahead and run up the long distance bill because you got to call your mother. And, right. I'll, right. and I'll pay that one. Right. Know? Yeah. But anyway, and, and he got in this apartment deal. And he was painting the vacant apartments, got a place to live. And he said, well, God dang. We said, we got to open the pool, but the only people in Oak City. What does he do? He go gets a license to do the pools in Norman. He's the only guy in town. Yep. So all these motels have got to pay him to do that. So he's, you know, I mean, he's that kind of guy. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Great. Here we go. Yep. So anyway, he gets uh, through school and. Kind of. Kind of through school. Kind of. Well, yeah. Most ways. <laughs> yeah. You know. All the way to one semester through school. Well, I'm. I got I'm, what I wanted. You know, but I'm super <laughs> proud of him. He's. Sure. Uh, well, you got through it eventually. He got his idea of uh, where he's headed. Sure. And he hadn't looked back. No. No, it's, I can see, uh, when I first met you guys, I didn't see the connection. And I was like, What's that? Well, I was like, that's Scott's dad? That's okay. That's not what I expected, you know? Jack Tank Hill. Right? So, Why, do you think I ought to wear a bomber's cap? And no, I what? just, you know, I just, you just, <laughs> you don't talk alike, you don't look a lot alike, you right. just, you know, you don't carry yourself the same. And so, it's taken, knowing you guys for a few years to, to see the, the, passing down of the of really the core values and the principles of your life whether you meant to do that on a or whether you did that you know you know i don't know if you ever sat down with scott and said this is why we don't borrow money and this is why we work like you probably didn't you just modeled the no, thing and it's just, stories oh this stupid son of a bitch i work with borrowed money on yeah. this truck and then his old lady got work laid off oh yeah like we got a guy that went his in 401k and he borrowed money to put a fence up yeah right you know from that, his 401k yeah yeah Smart, great idea. No, it was stories no penalties like that. there. You know, so and so borrowed money to buy this truck, and right. his wife lost her job, and they came and towed his truck off at lunchtime today. Right. You know, and you're so like, mm. and you're stories. like stories. Yep. Put that in your brain. I'm gonna store that in there yeah. for a while. Yeah. You're like, mm, don't owe the bank. On and the truck. Uh, my wife economics has just kept a an eye on it and a fist on it, and yep. she don't turn loose. Yeah. And that's good. That's the reason why I'm he where I'm at. All their opinions have got claw marks on them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So then that begs the question, what's the funnest couple things you spent money on in the last five years? I bought a Winnebago Sprinter camper. Okay. That we had fun with. Yeah. Are you done with it? Did you sell it? I sold it. <laughs> Guy drove down from Colorado with cash in his fist. And I said, are you shitting me? <laughs> and, All right, I'm out. So anyway, we used it three years. And, sure. And, and mom said, okay, that's enough of that. We'll go stay in the motel if we go somewhere. I said, All right. Okay. So. So you got a Winnebago. 
You guys ever go on vacation? Like what? to a real vacation? Like you guys went to Mexico. Did you have to drag their ass to Mexico? No, they wouldn't go. I told them I'd pay. <laughs> they, oh, they, they actually still didn't go to Mexico no. when you guys went. <laughs> My saying. wife will not cross the border. You are correct. He, she will not cross the border. So, but we you had fun building the house. We got now. It's what Mary right. wanted. She drew the plans up. Oh, for that's it cool. And all that. So you got a nice house. Yeah. Right. You got a little Lexus SUV. I've seen. Yeah. Right. So bought you, used. Bought used and in cash. Yep. I'm sure. Yeah. Yep. yep. We've had it. What five years yeah, now? Used cars. Drive them till they don't go no more. Yeah. yeah. She. You know. She got sixty thousand miles on it, and we've yeah. had it five years. Sure. Something like that. Yeah. So. Cars are one of the biggest holes in the bucket, man. Oh, that's like my little. That's out. like my little Tacoma truck. I mean, they they're just dying. But sure. You know, I want your truck. We're you know we need their your truck. Now uh, wait a minute. Do you think they need your truck, or they just want you to get on the lot and trick your ass out of it? Uh, they want to take my truck and take it down to the coast and sell it. Right. At a premium. Right. But they want to jack my ass up on a new truck. Right. Too. Right. And I told him, I said, hey, if I want premium dollar out of this, I'll just drive it down to Houston. And I'll make enough money I can fly back. Right. Oh, I guess you're not interested, Mr. Hambrick. And yeah. I said. You're right. That's right. Yeah. And I flew down about Rachel's Lexus. I flew to Dallas and drove it home because it was so much cheaper down there than it was in Springfield, Missouri. Bought it in cash. I went to the bank, got a cashier's check, flew one-way ticket down to Dallas, Ubered right. from the airport to the dealership. Handed him the cashier's check and drove the drove the Lexus home. Hey man, thanks for being on the show. It's been good. Well, it's all been wonderful up to this point. <laughs> so, I uh, it's always good to see where uh, my cohort comes from, and I like seeing these stories and trying to put these things together. It's like a puzzle. <laughs> well, it's like a puzzle where you don't have the box top, you know. And every time I do an interview like this, it like gives me a little glimpse of the box top of the puzzle top. And I can see what the picture is. I can kind of see how the puzzle starts fitting together. So it, uh, it makes sense. So thanks for the uh, legacy you've left through your kiddos. Well, I'm proud of them. They're yeah. doing me good. I hope. Yeah, your strength training, getting strong. Your wife is too. You guys have bought into the strength training. And we didn't even talk about that. But you guys, every time I come over there, and matter of fact, as we speak, your wife is over there training with charity. And uh, did oh, you it's... did you have a perspective from somebody my age why I would do that? Why would you do that? I want to be able to get up off the floor. Yeah. I want to be able to get up off a toilet seat. Yep. I want to be able to wipe my butt. Yeah. Pretty demoralizing to have somebody else and, do that for you. And, well, yeah. And there's also, you have the balance that, sure. that goes along with it. It goes a long ways. Yep. And you'll feel better. Yep. Yeah, I don't think we said it. So you're you're either 72 or 73. <laughs> it was 75. <laughs> right. I'm, in my, I'm in my 70s. Yes. Yes. Well, that's been an hour. And I want you to know I'm really proud of you. You beat all the odds. Yep. Nobody's supposed to do it. Well, no. you helped me. Thank you. <laughs> so I, I could concentrate on raising my family instead of fighting a kid. You know, I mean, that says volumes. Yep. Yep. You know, a lot of people spend their life fighting their kids to keep them out of trouble and all this. Yeah. I've been blessed. So Kind of. <laughs> kind of blessed. Because we know the stories about the World Book Encyclopedias. And the, well, as the world turns. And the male you know, issues. Uh, it's all right. <laughs> well, love you, Dad. Thanks for doing it. Appreciate you it. You bet. Thanks, man. Thanks Matt, for being on the show. Appreciate it. Keep up the good work. Thanks, brother. <laughs>